Hello, my name is Bill Mizzle. I'm from Heritage Baptist Academy in the seventh grade, and I'll be giving you a story called Getting Back to Nature by John McPherson. It happens every year, just days after school gets out, while we're still recuperating from having our brains fried by final exams, my dad gets that familiar, crazed look on his face. I slap my forehead and break into <laughs> convulsions. Dad's plotting the annual family camping trip. The next night at dinner, he gives those dreaded words, it is time to get back to nature. Almost immediately, my little brother starts whimpering due to his lifelong fear of being captured and raised by a family of bears. <laughs> my sister Doreen can't stand camping because there's no place to plug in her blow dryer. Me, I am not too psyched either. Dad smells like a water buffalo with a sinus infection. <laughs> when it comes right down to it, I want to spend a week in the basement, then go camping. Mom, on the other hand, is usually pretty successful about avoiding the annual family camping trip. She usually develops a highly contagious disease or conjures up an important social event she's got to attend, such as the 25th annual Tupperware Repathon or the <laughs> Dunkin' Floss Festival. <laughs> For us kids, there's no escape. Don't get me wrong, Dad's a great guy, but to him, getting back to nature means driving five miles out of town to raise campground and video arcade. During prime camping season, Ray's looks like the parking lot of Kmart. It's basically just a field that's been filled with RVs, each about the size of our high school. Some of them even have satellite dishes on the roof and in ground pools. Aside from the video arcade, Ray has a miniature golf course, a laundromat, and a cafeteria. You could probably get a better back to nature experience by hanging out next to the fountain at the mall. <laughs> Every year, we load up the car maps, compasses, and dried camping food that looks like something you can get a gerbil and head off to race. <laughs> the only reason I can think of for taking a map and compass is to aid us kids in finding our way to the cafeteria so we can avoid eating the dried food. <laughs> <laughs> Unfolding our tent for the first time each year is not a pleasant experience. It smells like a pair of sneakers that have worn for six years. Non stop! <laughs> we opened it last year. After a year in the attic, I found a hot dog stuck to the canvas that had worn green fur. Oh, oh. Seriously, nauseating sight. Normally, the first few nights I have recurring nightmares that someone's trying to smother me with a dirty dirt sock. <laughs> Even without the nightmares, sleeping in the tent at Ray's is not a good experience. Aside from my dad's water buffalo impersonation and my little brother whining because he thinks the government and the campsite is some sort of psycho grizzly bear, there's always at least one mosquito. It sounds like a B-52 trying to land on my ear. I always wind up sleeping with my head in the sleeping bag, breathing through a straw that I took from the cafeteria for just such a number of In spite of the sleeping conditions, we usually have a decent time at Ray's video arcade. In fact, I do have to admit that I enjoy setting new records in commando and my skills in aeronautics can improve each year. I guess not total waste after all.